GameStop is desperate and desperate times call for desperate measures. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. GameStop has announced, not via a press release, but on Twitter, that they're opening GameStop retro stores. And someone who's a big fan of retro gaming and those old school classics looks at this initially and is like, Hey, cool, retro stores and games that I can go buy for the Super Nintendo or PlayStation 1 and have a location to be able to go to them and buy these games. Good stuff. And then I take a step back and I'm like, well, there's already plenty of mom and pop stores that do this already. Never mind thrift stores, never mind conventions, never mind eBay, never mind all these other places you can get these retro games. But okay, I guess the more the merrier. But if GameStop is diving back into retro yet again, which feels like, what, the fifth time they've done this in the past two decades? They see the writing on the wall, and I can't help but think that this move screams desperation. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article talking about the GameStop retro stores. And it was a little bit confusing how they announced this, because when I first heard it, I'm like, okay, so they're bringing back retro games to every GameStop location? Nope, apparently it's just certain locations are going to be changed to GameStop retro, completely overhauling the GameStop itself into a new store that's only retro games okay i'm kind of understanding this so i go to the store locator and being someone who lives in the san diego area figured there'd be a few stores around here because it's such a big deal and there's one and it's like 18 miles away from me that's not very convenient but okay maybe they're just starting off small and seeing how this goes i get it it's a big investment and a big risk but why would gamestop be making this risk in the first place because they see the writing on the wall the next generation of consoles are rumored to not have disk drives completely hell the playstation 5 updated version of it is already coming without a disk drive that you have to purchase separately and most people let's be honest, aren't going to do that. And that is having some people speculate that the PlayStation 5 Pro is just going to straight up not have a disk drive. And being the case with that and looking at what Microsoft is doing and potentially making a portable device that may not have physical media on it on board as well, all we're left with at this point for out of the big three game companies to be making physical media would be Nintendo. So GameStop is being left with the proposition of doing this or just being a Nintendo store that sells pop figures. So GameStop sees the writing on the wall and they're trying to proactively be prepared, bracing for impact, and having something to fall back on when this inevitable switch to all digital media goes through. Well, from that perspective, I get it. I don't think it's going to work, which is another one of the reasons why people have been saying GameStop, unfortunately, for those that love the brand, is not long for this planet. Here's why I feel like its strategy falls short. First off, competition and established alternatives that I already spoke about at the beginning of this video with online auction sites like eBay, thrift stores, conventions. They've all been out for years and collectors know where to find the best deals and how to distinguish from genuine and counterfeit products, something that GameStop will find difficult to compete with. And that leads into the next point of the counterfeit products where GameStop tried to do this before and failed miserably where they were allegedly caught selling counterfeit Pokemon games. One of the biggest and most pressing issues with retro gaming right now is the counterfeit and repro scene. The market has been completely flooded because of these cheap Chinese knockoffs that I've seen on eBay coming through, not being labeled, and looking exactly like the actual games until you open them up in many cases and find out that nope, that's not actually the game. And in a weird way, segue, this is kind of what got me to take a giant step back from retro gaming. In addition to, I didn't really play the games. I have all of them in my library that I ever wanted. But when I want to sit down and play one of the games, I know this is going to be heresy. I use emulators and ROMs. I don't have the time to deal with all the hookups, the cords, the wires, getting everything connected, making sure it plugs into the new HTVs, having everything set up. I don't have all the room in the world in my house. And honestly, out of sheer convenience, if I want to play retro, 
and just emulate. And I feel like a lot of people, whether they admit it or not, are in the same exact situation, especially when it comes to looking across the board at these prices for these retro games where you can literally just play them for free on your computer. Which leads me into the third point, the price sensitivity. GameStop is going to have to try to keep up with what the going rates for these games are from auction sites like eBay and even conventions. And they have to compete with these hundreds of thousands of conventions and showrunners and dealers that are selling these games, giving people good deals, prices, bundling them together, and giving people a reason to go to conventions and have some excitement when it comes to retro gaming. On December 3rd, 2020, Deer in a Hat wrote on Twitter saying, has anyone ever dealt with GameStop selling them fake games? I bought a copy of Pokemon Platinum from them the other day, and this cartridge is 100% a fake and they are not alone looking through the reddit threads and forums of people talking about their bad experiences when gamestop was doing this as a trial run a few years ago and it worked out terribly there were a lot of very frustrated people buying repros and counterfeits saying this is not something i'm going to support and gamestop would have to find a way to guarantee, reassure their customers that they're always going to be there for them and always take the games back, no questions asked, and then that enters a whole bunch of other problems of then you get the bad actors trying to slide in counterfeits to, to, to say, oh, you sold me this counterfeit when they actually bought a real one and then trade back a counterfeit one, and then they get all this bad inventory and it ends up being a financially losing proposition for them in the end because these counterfeits for some of these games are very valuable if you have the authentic version of them. Games GameStop's clearly trying to leverage their remaining physical presence of brick and mortar locations to offer something unique out there, but the writing on the wall still points to a future dominated by digital gaming. A few years ago, I saw GameStop announce how they were going to try to turn their stores into like a gaming hub where you can go chill out, sit on the couch, play some games, have some snacks, hang out with your buddies, play some co-op games, maybe buy some games, maybe not, but just as a, a gaming library, like a place to chill and hang out. And at the first sight of that, I was like, okay, some tabletop games, some, some Magic the Gathering tournaments, some video games, N64, Mario Kart, seems like a great idea. But the problem is, they went away from that and they ended up going with smaller locations, smaller footprints, smaller stores for real estate places, and they can't have the room for all this stuff. So instead, they're now shifting the dynamic to certain locations are just going to be retro and sell old games. And that's not something I can get behind. I did love the idea of people going there for a game library. That's actually why I invested in them a few years ago. And for those of you that are new to the channel, you may not know, I was someone who starred in GameStop Rise of the Players, streaming now on Hulu. You can see me in a movie, a legitimate documentary talking about how I made some money investing in this company because I believed in what their mission was back in the day. And now I see what they're doing here and I'm just like, no, I gotta be honest, I can't lie about it. I don't think this is gonna work. I hope it does from someone who just loves retro gaming and is a retro enthusiast and thinks that this is something that should be out there. I would love it to work. I just don't think it's going to. And that's just my honest feeling about it. There's a sense of irony in GameStop strategy with all this, hopping in that DeLorean and racing back to the past while the rest of the industry speeds into the future. GameStop is clearly trying to find foothold as the landscape continues to shift. But the nostalgia-driven GameStop retro initiative won't be enough to stave off the inevitable. Unless GameStop can address the number of issues that I brought up in this video and potentially go back to making GameStops a place that people want to go and hang out at, I don't foresee this becoming anything other than another failed attempt at selling retro games at a GameStop, which like I said, it's like the fifth time they've tried to do this in the past two decades, which at some point you got to acknowledge it's just not working. This is the same GameStop that was getting in trouble for throwing away old PlayStation 1 games that weren't selling into the dumpster, destroying them all because they didn't have room for the inventory and didn't want to deal with them. But now all of a sudden, a decade later, they're back to saying, oh, actually, we do want to sell PlayStation 1 games and we do want to go back into retro. If anything, that should scare everybody that this company is known for taking games in and then when they don't sell or they change their mind on a whim, they just destroy the games again. And it's something that someone who loves retro games like myself does not ever want to see.
Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out SmashJT.com for the full article. I'd be interested and very curious to hear what you guys think about GameStop Retro. And if you think this has any shot in hell at succeeding. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy what I'm doing and appreciate it, please consider hitting that join button. And as always, you stay smashing. For example, Smash JT. He wasn't getting any views when he was just talking about pleasant video games. But since he's become a woke SJW, his videos have exploded. Now it isn't because he has quality videos or he has great opinions, just people like to hate watch. They like to watch negative videos for some reason. Smash, change, 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 change.